I think in my last clip, when I were, I did a clip about my, my steam cylinders which I've made and I think I touched on the, the valve chess and I'm just going to go into a little bit more detail here with these valve chess. Now, you may be using castings for these but I've not used castings, I've cut everything I need out of a piece of solid cast iron. This piece were, were 15 inches long when I, when I got it and I've cut it up and got all my, my parts out for my cylinders, uh, my valve chest, my valve chest covers, etc, etc. Once I'd got them sliced off, I've cut the profile on my milling machine. I actually axed most of it first and then I've just trimmed it up on my miller. Now if you've not got a milling machine, remember, you don't need a milling machine to do this loco. You can do it in a lathe and you, it with a milling attachment, i.e. a vice on a vertical slide on your, on your lathe. You can, just the same really, you're just working opposite way. Instead of vertical, you're working horizontal. So, I've faced these valve chests up to thickness now. And I've profiled the shape out to the relevant size. And the next step in the book is to make a jig to do all your drilling work. And here's the jig. And I think I mentioned it on my last clip. I'm not taking that route. Um, I just want to be different and I just want to do it a different way. It is quite involved that jig, but if you've got no other, other means of doing it, that's the route you want to take. It's got all notches cut out for reference points and it's a, it's a dual purpose jig for your cylinder. Well, it's a triple, triple um, purpose jig. It's for your cylinders, your valve chests and your valve covers. So that's the route you'll take if you're not doing it my way. And uh, the way I've done it, I've gone onto my milling machine and I've used my digital readouts to get all my hole positions on my valve chest. And I've drilled those. Now you can just get your hole positions the same on your on your lathe with your vertical slide attachment on, I suppose. Uh, otherwise you'd have to use that jig. Right, so where are we up to then? I've got the holes drilled and all I've got to do now is put these circular ends on to, onto both sides of each valve chest. So this is where the important bit comes where you've got to have them marked up as, as a handed, as a pair, they've got to be handed. But you can't just do them the same on both sides and expect to turn it round because it'll not work because this side has a bigger hole in for the valve spindle and this side is the a smaller hole where the valve spindle, spindle sits so that's why you've got to have them handed so that's important and coming on to now where the steam's going to go into the valve chest into this hole here which I've already drilled part of the way through. Now, on the drawing, there's no actual dimensions on how to drill that steam, that steam port. It tells you the position that it's central in the valve chest and how far it is from these fixing holes and that's the only dimension that you really get. So, and also I've seen on an alternative drawing where you can actually, instead of drilling it at an angle here, to meet it on the uh, vertical, you can also come in from the outside and then go down the vertical to pick it up to meet and then plug this outside. So you'd have, a, you'd have that hole in going so far through, then you come in this way and drill straight through and then you'd plug this side with a with a plug to make it steam tight that's the alternative method I think well I'm going to stick with it doing it the uh, machine in it on the angle I'm going to stick with that method a in my case it's just as easy to do that and it's a bit less work because then you've got you've not got to make a blanking plug for this end 
and, and tap this end. Right, so to get that angle then you could use some trigonometry and, and work it all out. But I'm not I'm not going to that extreme with this. Um, I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible. So what I've done, I photocopied this drawing and brought it up to a, a bigger size, probably near to full size. And what I'm doing on this light on this edge here. I've put a very light imaginary line there and I'm using my more and right angle gauge just to replicate that angle that's on the drawing. I've just set my angle gauge to match the drawing. Now I know what you're going to say, the drawing might be um, it might have got distorted with photocopying, yeah I know that but it's not that critical so I've, I've set my angle gauge at that angle and I've measured it with my uh, protractor and it's actually 70 degrees from the horizontal or if you're coming from the vertical obviously then it's 20 degrees so it's a 70 degree angle and all I'm going to do now is uh, in, my, in my milling vise or if you're doing it in your lathe in your vise that you're using on your vertical slide so this is not my actual milling vise but I'm just using it to show you it's just a matter of the side that you've drilled your hole in has got to be on the underside because that's where you're going to that's where you're going to meet with this hole. It's just a matter of putting it in your vise, putting your angle finder onto the vise and setting this over at that relevant angle and clamping it up like that. If you're on your milling machine, if you're on your lathe, you're going to be doing it that way. You'll have your vertical slide here with your vice on coming in with your lathe spindle with your saddle that way. So it's just it's just the same as doing it in miller. Uh, the only advantage we have in a milling machine is you've not got to keep breaking your lathe down to set it up for milling. That's that's the only advantage. So uh, because I've not made that jig then to do my holes, all I'm going to be doing is setting this on my cylinder block, clamping it on in correct position, and then uh, transferring the holes through onto onto each cylinder. Uh, remember, remembering that you're keeping them handed, that's important. And then uh, for my cylinder covers, same again, I'm just going to clamp my cylinder cover onto my valve chest and transfer the holes through and then I'm going to have a matching pair for each side. So I'm going to go over to Miller now then and uh, and get that mill get that drill through milled and drilled through and then it's just a matter of me turning these diameters on to to the end of the valve chest for the spindle to go through with where the lands fit and the covers and that's it then with valve chest I think uh, I don't think there's any anything else to do. Right, so I'll, I'll move over to Miller now and do that. I'm over at Miller machine now and uh, I've got the job set up in my vise. And what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll take camera off at stand and just show you what I've done over at the other side. I'm going to go in, go in with this spot facing tool just to get that, get the angle off the off the side that I'm cutting so it's got a horizontal plane for my drill to attack it. Um, I'll just take camera off at stand and show you what I've done. 
I mean, I know I know all you professionals out there are going to know all this, and there's always more than more than one way to do a job. I'm just um, trying to show any beginners that might might be starting out just an insight on a way to do it. So I've got my angle gauge, and I've got it set on a parallel, and I've set the job over to that angle. Clamped it up in my vise, made sure it's um, in line with the axis of the machine that way. Just put my clock on and checked it that way. And I'm now ready for drilling from that position to break into this hole here. So I'll set my tools up and I'll uh, I'll do another shot when I've got that set up. Well, I've got my spot facing tool and I'm just going to gently take a cut to get that face so it's level for my drill. So it's on the right plane for my drill to attack it. Now, you will need a longish tool here and this is the only one I've got so I'm, I'm having to make do with this. Right, I've changed over to my 5 16th drill now. I've got uh, a diameter now where I can pick up on. Just starting to break through now on, into the into the other hole. I'll just take camera off and show you. I'm just getting the light. So that, that's broke through now into my other hole, like exactly where I wanted it to. Try to work camera, work new machine and work my light at the same time and it's not succeeding very well. I'm going to drill this uh, spindle hole in here through these bosses right through. That'll be my next job. And what I've got to do now, it's, uh, it's two fairly simple uh, jobs really, a, a simple drilling job and a simple turning job and uh, it is simple but it's, it's imperative that you get everything set correctly and lined up correctly and I'm just going to emphasize this what I've already said they are handed these an offside and an ear side or a left and a right whichever you want to mark them up and the right hand side has got the 3 16 hole on this side and an eighth hole on that side for the valve spindle and when you turn it round the other way the left hand side is on the opposite side which is this side three sixteenths this side one eighth that side so they are handed remember that uh, so I've got me hole punched here ready for drilling and I'm going to drill this in my milling vise. You could do it in your drill or you could do it in your lathe with your vertical slide in your vise. Whichever method you want to use. So I've set this up true in my milling vise with my clock. And I've got that centre line running dead true down both embossers. And I've actually got this 1 8 extended drill here, which I've uh, come across in my travels. And I'm going to use that so I can go through the 3 16 side first with this 1 8 and then uh, it'll just reach the other side and then once I've gone through and it's all in line I'll open that up to 3 16 uh, with an appropriate drill to put a 3 16 reamer through 
So once I've got that done then, I've got to put in my, my four jaw chuck, set up to the hole that I'm drilling now, and turn this 5 8 diameter boss on here. Where the land nuts are going to fit and the covers for the spindle once it's in. So that's all there is to do on my valve chest now, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. It's a simple drilling and uh, turning job. And when I've done that, I'll move on to marking the holes out on my cylinders and uh, on my valve chest covers. So I'll sign off for now then and catch you on my next clip then.